Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to solve problem 72 of chapter 5. Determine the components of the reaction at the ball and socket joint A and the tension in the supporting cables DB and DC. So the problem is referring to reaction. So it's not telling us whether we have reaction forces or reaction moments. But by looking at the supports, we can see that it allows rotation about all the axes. So there is no reaction moments, but it doesn't allow movement or translational movement along any of the axes. I cannot move this support along X or Y or Z. So I have reaction forces. Because I don't know the actual direction of these reactions, I'm gonna assume positive and at the end if I get a negative value, that means that the direction that I assumed is incorrect. So first I draw a free by diagram. I write the support reactions uh, at A. I have tensions in cable DC and DB. So I call them FDC and FDB. Sometimes you refer to T because it's tension. Or we can, but it's a force as well. I have a distributed loading. The magnitude is 800. It's uniform. The distance is three meter. So that would be 2400 Newton. So I can place my resultant force of the distributed loading in here as well, 2400 Newton. I'm gonna write all my forces in Cartesian form so I can uh, add them together in summation of forces or write summation of uh, moments. So for force FDB and FDC, I need to find a unit vector. And because I have the dimension, I can find the unit vector for each case. So FDB, I don't know the magnitude, but I can find the direction if I multiply it by its corresponding unit vector. Unit vector is a position vector divided by its magnitude. And uh, DB would be FDB, the unit vector would be negative point uh, 37i point 55j and point 74k I do the same thing for DC I don't know the magnitude but I know the directions because I can find the unit vector and a unit vector is the position vector divided by its magnitude so by now you should be able to uh, find unit vectors. So the unit vector is very similar except the J component has a different sign, has a positive sign for DC. So if after multiplication I have the Cartesian form, now I have my force FR because it's acting in the opposite direction of Z axis, so it's negative 2400K. And at A, I have all the components in I, J, and K. So I have A, X, I, A, Y, J, and A, Z, K. So I can write my summation of forces and summation of moment to find the unknowns. I have five unknowns, three reaction forces at A, and then the two tensions. So I start with summation of forces in x zero so if i go here i know this as an x component i have an x component i component and then a x similar for y component and then for the k component i have one two three as well as my fourth here uh, looking at the picture, you can tell that the tension in DC and DB uh, should be the same because our geometry is uh, symmetric, uh, but we are going to show it by the equations as well. So summation of forces in X equals zero. I have the components here. I have negative 0.37 FDB negative 0.37 FDC 
plus ax equals zero. I have three unknown in this equation. I can't solve it. I need more equation. For y direction, I have ay plus five five f dc minus 0.55 f db equal zero. Uh, and then I have summation of forces in z direction. I have az. I have the z component of my force dc and the z component of my force fdb in addition to my distributed loading that I wrote it uh, I found the result and force for it and that's 2400 acting in a negative direction so you can see I have my five unknowns in the three equations so I cannot solve it I need more equations but because it's a rigid body I can write summation of moment so summation of moment I'm gonna write the summation of moment about point A I'm gonna use the vector definition of moment so I can write summation of R cross F equal zero so looking at my free body diagram, I can see that the force FDC is gonna create a moment about A, FDB, and the force FR. So I'm gonna call this point R. I need the position vector to the locations. So I need a position vector from A to this point, which is point D. So I need RAD. Also, the position vector to point R. So R, I'm going to call it AR. Let me write the position vectors here. R80, going from A to D, we are going through positive X and positive uh, Z direction and the unit is a meter. I'm going from A R that would be 4i plus 1.5k and the unit is meter. Now I can write my cross product R cross F because I have three forces that are creating moments, so I have three R cross F. So R cross F plus R cross F plus R cross F equals zero. So the first AD cross FDC, AD cross FDB. So both forces have the same position vector because they are acting on the same uh, point, point D. And then AR, FR. So for each case, I have to write the cross product. Equal zero. The first row IJK. The second row is the position vector and the third row would be fourth. So the order matters. If you do the wrong order, you're gonna uh, get a negative value and your whole uh, results would be wrong. Or AD, I'm going to write it in the second row, that would be 101. One. It doesn't have any J component, 101. One. And the position vector AR would be 0, uh, sorry, 401.5. And I'm going to write my forces here. So I have negative 0.37 FDC. I have 0.55 FDC and I have 0.74 FDC. I have negative 0.37 FDB, negative 0.55 FDB, and I have 0.74 FDB. And my FR is only acting in Z direction, so negative 24. 
So I have three cross product. That means that I have three vectors. When I add them together, I have one vector. If that vector is zero, that means that all the components should be zero. The I component, J component, and the Z component. That's how I get my three equations. But the result for this one is negative 0.55 FDCI, negative 1.11 FDCJ, plus 0.55 FDCK. And then for the second cross product, it's very similar. Just some of the signs are different. FDBK. And the last one would be 9600J. So I said that if this vector is zero, that means that it's I component, J component, and, Z comp and K component should be zero. So the I component, that means that this, I have I here, should be zero, no more I component. So that means that negative 0.55 FDC plus 0.55 FDB equals zero. So that's the conclusion that we could get from the picture as well. Remember, whenever we are talking about symmetry, you need to make sure that the geometry is symmetric, uh, the loading is symmetric, and the material is symmetric. In many instances, I've seen that the students make assumptions that uh, an image is symmetric, which is actually not. So if you're not sure, don't make that assumption. So I, now the J component, I have here, here, and also the third one has a J component as well, so I have three components. FDB, FDC, plus 9600 equals zero. So these two are the same because of the conclusion of the first equation, so I can find the value. So I find two unknown by just this equation, The K component is not gonna give me anything, but I'm just gonna write it here so you can see. It's gonna give me the same conclusion as the first equation. It's simply saying that 0.55 FDC plus negative point five five FDB zero, which is the same thing as the first equation. So we didn't need this equation because we have five unknown, we can solve our problem with five equations. We didn't need the, the last uh, equation. So now that I found my unknowns, two of the unknowns, I can go here and uh, replace that in my equation so I can find a x a y n and a z so if i replace here the only unknown would be a x so i will find a x to be 3.2 kilonewton and then here because these two are the same you can see that a y would be zero and then a z I'm gonna write it here. If I replace it here and here, the only unknown would be AZ, and the value for AZ is negative four kilonewton. So I got a negative value, a negative value that means that the direction that we assumed in our free body diagram is incorrect, and the opposite would be the right direction of AZ. So we have five unknowns. We wrote our five equations and determined the